Hi, and welcome back to Tai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman, and today I thought that I'm gonna tie one of these mayflies. Uh, it's an absolute uh, favorite pattern of mine. I tie it in several different varieties, depending on if I wanna imitate uh, like the big uh, lake uh, living uh, mayfly, the Ephemera vulgata. I tie it in darker colors, but in this case it's a Donica, Ephemera Donica. Uh, so I tie it in a little bit lighter colors. And all dry fly fishermen here in Scandinavia know that uh, from May, uh, depending on where you live, until like late June, it's like Christmas on many of our trout waters uh, here in Scandinavia. It's when the big mayflies hatch. Uh, and this is also the time when the b largest trout from uh, the stream or the lake uh, come out to, to eat from the surface. Uh, so it's good to have a nice imitation uh, of actually all the different stages of the life cycle, but the done version is the most fun to fish. So let's give this one a go. Uh, I tie it on a partridge nymph long, which is a 2x long hook, uh, which allows for tying quite a long fly <laughs> the, you know these guys are quite big and instead of messing around with with extended bodies and stuff i prefer to tie it on a slightly longer hook it's faster and easier and it fishes really well okay i'm using a 6-0 uh, olive or golden olive uh, tech stream tying thread uh, it's quite important that uh, you can split the thread um, because we're gonna do some spinning uh, of some hackle fibers later on in the fly. Uh, tails for this guy is made up of uh, pheasant tail. This one is uh, colored in golden olive. Just clip off four fibers which is one more than the natural insect have, but it's good to have one in case, have one extra if one breaks. I measured it in, I want it to be sort of the same length as the hook shank. And I tie it in all the way, just before the hook starts to bend. There we go, I try to tie it in at the exactly the same point, make sure it's secure. I go forward with the thread. Then I'm gonna dig in my big box to find some dubbing. There we have it. Um, for body on this fly, I'm using super fine uh, dry fly dubbing. This one is called Pale Morning Dun, which is a really, really light color, uh, really light olive. It's almost a little bit of cream in it as well. Nice color for uh, some of the water I'm fishing. The color of the actual insects can vary quite a lot uh, in between different waters. Uh, so it's good to, to tie up some, some darker ones and some lighter ones. And they can actually also vary in size. Uh, now I'm on a size 8, but it can be good to have some size 10 uh, flies as well. Okay, I have dubbed the um, dubbing on the thread. Just laid it in, in the back of it and twisted it between my fingers. Now I'm going to start to build up the body. And I want to make sort of a little taper on this one. So I start making it a little bit thicker in the front and then I let it become slimmer uh, while I'm going backwards. I need to add just a tiny, tiny bit. Sometimes it can help to moisten your fingers a little bit while winding dubbing. Okay, uh, 
now I'm going to rib uh, the f body of the fly with uh, the excess pheasant tail fibers. But to make this a little bit more durable, I take a heckle plier and catch the fibers and sort of twist it around my tying thread. This way I'm going to uh, sort of strengthen the whole ribbing. You could do this without the heckle plier, but uh, the excess fibers are quite short, so it can be tricky to get a hold of them. So a heckle plier is, is good help. Okay, that's like four turns. we we'll reach the front of the fly. Perfect. And I'm going to make the wing of a yarn from Tiemco. This is called Arrow Dry Wing. It's uh, not your average yarn. Uh, this one is actually hollow, which makes it float really, really well. Gives a nice uh, floatability to the fly. And when I tie this in, I there's sort of a natural crease from the from the card here and I use that uh, when I tie it in. I lay it in on the underside of the hook shank, sort of trap the hook shank and hold it a little bit backwards and go rearwards with my tying thread and sort of trap it in. There we go and then it's sort of uh, tilted a little bit to the back and then you can do turn or two behind the wing as well okay now i'm gonna leave uh, my bobbin hanging uh, straight downwards and letting the thread untwist so it becomes flat and then i'm gonna prepare the next step i take one of these uh, sort of light brown colored uh, CDC feathers uh, and then I prepare it by taking away some of the fluffiest stuff down below here and I strip one side of the feather from fibers so I only have the fibers from one side left like so. Lay it down. Then I'm going to use a sort of a hackle fiber from uh, this is Coq de Leon. Uh, the saddle hackle from a Coq de Leon in I think it's light pardo. So it's quite quite a light color. And I sort of do the same as I did with the CDC feather. I try to tease the fibers to stand uh, like 90 degrees out from the stem of the hackle and then I strip one side take away the fibers and I can also take away some of the fluffier stuff down here get that out of here okay and now I'm going to prep this in uh, this excellent little uh, tool from Mark Petitjean. This is the magic tool uh, and it's actually a tool uh, just to make uh, sort of dubbing loops uh, for hackles and it's really really helpful when you're uh, using feathers. Uh, you can use more or less any feather you can think of. And I'm gonna show you how it's done. I take the table clip here. I put the two feathers I'm going to use together. Make sure the fibers are pointing sort of straight up. And then I'm going to place them in the table clip here. And just pull it down this crease. There we go. Everything is trapped there. And then I trim off uh, the excess on the sides. 
And then I'm going to transfer this to sort of the other clip here. There we go. Now for the smart thing. Now I'm going to cut off the stem. And that's gone and I have all the fibers from both the CDC and the uh, Coctelion trapped in here. Really easy to transfer over to the sort of the loop I'm going to do now. And what I do now is that I try to flatten out the thread with my finger uh, towards my nail. And then I take the needle and try to split it in two. This can be hard. Yeah, that's it. And take the materials, get it in there. And let go of the clip like that. Now all the fibers are trapped uh, in between, inside the thread. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give my bobbin a good spin, which twists the thread. That should be enough. Now you can see how it all spins together nicely. Then you can actually push the uh, twist forward with your between your fingers and rewind the bobbin. Uh, and if some fibers have been trapped, you can give it a little brush with sort of a dubbing brush or something. That's good. Now we're gonna wind this as a hackle, sort of. Uh, and I start by doing sort of two turns behind the wing. And then I go forward, teasing everything backwards. Quite tight, teasing everything backwards and upwards. There we go. That's it. And we got quite a sparse hackle uh, with a nice mix of uh, both CDC and the stiffer uh, coctelion fibers, which gives a really nice footprint on the surface and good flotation as well. And that's more or less it for the tying part. I'm just gonna uh, do a small head here and a quick couple of whip finishes. One. Two. Come on. Like so. Cut off the thread. Okay. Uh, just to even out the wing, I'm gonna give it a little brush through, which sort of separates all the fibers in a really nice way. That's it. Now I'm going to trim it in the sort of a preferred shape and a preferred length. I sort of want it a little bit sort of the same length as the hook shank. The wings on these guys can be quite big. So first, I sort of pinch everything together and try to do it as flat as possible. And then I cut it in an angle uh, backwards, like so. Now you get a nice taper to the wing. You can always go in and trim it a little bit extra in afterwards. That's it. Uh, and just to make it a little better looking, I'm going to put some dots with a, with a permanent marker, if I can find it. Okay. This is a 
fine color permanent marker from fl fly dressing in uh, sort of a dark uh, olive brownish color. I'm just going to do a few dots on the wing like this. Probably doesn't matter at all, but it looks a little bit better. Gives me confidence to pick this fly from the box. That's it. Quite an easy tie and uh, a durable fly that works really well. I've never had a fish rising steadily so far uh, that has refused one of these imitations actually. Uh, so I have high confidence in this fly. I'd love to hear uh, where you guys would fish this kind of fly. And uh, also if uh, you would like the chance to win it, uh, just drop a comment in the box below here. And we'll see, maybe you get the chance to try this actual sample out. <laughs> well, if you like uh, fly tying, uh, make sure to check out fly dressing on Instagram. And uh, for more fly tying videos, give uh, this channel a follow. Uh, we'll try to do a bunch of them every year on various uh, themes. And happy tying, guys.